الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فأحييكم بتحية أهل الجنة ألا وهي السلام فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وطبتم وطاب سعيكم وممشاكم وتبوأتم جميعا من الجنة منزلا And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us anew from the people of Jannah as the glad tithing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا That if you go, come past the gardens of Jannah and the gardens of, of and, 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 and the fields of Jannah or the gardens of Jannah, then take a seat. And the gardens of Jannah here in the dunya are majalisu dhikr and that's why the Prophet sallallahu also said in the beautiful hadith, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ That if a group of people gather and collect in one of the masajid of Allah and remember uh, it between them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend the tranquility upon them and the angels will descend in those gatherings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention them in a gathering within, with, with him high subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning the angels. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those in this beautiful hadith, Allahumma ameen. Dear respected brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we come and we come towards the end, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a good ending for us and you and the Muslimin. The end of the series of the series of Iman in this blessed masjid, inshallah, uh, the Queen Cross masjid, with the accompanying of the Dudley Da'wah brothers and the activity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid them and to assist them upon every khair. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and them always upon the truth and to keep us and them always upon the haqq. And therefore, on this note of ending and finalizing this series, firstly, we'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing this, this opportunity to go through essential aspects of iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who hear the speech and benefit from it and act upon it. Allahumma ameen. And f uh, secondly, after that, we thank the committee of the Masjid, Masjid Queen Cross. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and to aid them and to reward them with good and to reward them with genital for those for their effort and for allowing such reminders essential important reminders for the brothers in this local community and for the da'wah that they do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from them and after that we thank uh, the brothers and the sisters who have attended walillahi alhamd throughout these series and uh, wallah it's always to see the continuous regular beautiful faces and those who come and pop from time to time uh, and visit, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them for taking the time out uh, with every good and to bless them and to bless their family and to put khair in them and to put khair in their learning and barakah in their learning and their time, Allahumma ameen. And upon that, we'll start with mentioning one of the last pillars of Iman that we did not have time to complete last time and we will continue with the uh, chosen topic for today's lesson, inshallah, which is the uh, summarization and a concise bullet points in regards to the belief and the matters in regards to the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And upon that, we say 
the last pillar of Iman from the young Shabab, just so we can get them active, inshallah, and the young youth who can tell us what is the last pillar of Iman. We mentioned the five last time, inshallah, and we agreed that there are six pillars of Iman. What is the last pillar of Iman? We mentioned the Imanu Billah, believing in Allah. Al-Imanu bil malaika believing in the angels. Al-Imanu bil kutub samawiya believing in the uh, books. And Al-Imanu bil yawm al-akhir, Al-Imanu bil rusul believing in the messengers. Wal-Imanu bil yawm al-akhir believing in uh, the last day. What is the final one? Anybody, now let, let's open it up. I think the, the young brothers are shy. Let's o- open it up, inshallah, to the elders. Naam, ahsan Allah ilayk. ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase your knowledge as well. Al imanu bil qadr, believing in the decree or the predestination or the preordainment, as they may call it, uh, in various meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khayrihi as it came in the hadith of Jibreel, uh, uh, the hadith of Jibreel in Sahih Muslim uh, from the authority of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, when angel Jibreel came in the form of a, a human and asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam questions like what is Islam and what is Iman and what is Ihsan. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa answered by the question of what is Islam with the five pillars of Islam. And what is Iman with the six pillars of Iman and the final of them is Al-Imanu Bil-Qadr Khayrihi Wa Sharri Believing in the Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. And Al-Imanu Bil-Qadr is an essential part of the Muslim's Iman. And a lot of people and a lot of the Muslims misunderstand it. And therefore it's essential that the Muslim rectifies this understanding so he can get this subject matter correct and rectified in regards to his belief. And it is aslun min usul al-iman. Al-imanu bil qadr, aslun min usul al-iman. That it is a great main foundation from the pillars of iman. Kama qala al-nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akkada ala dhalik fil hadith wa an tu'mina bil qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi. Like what the Prophet ﷺ did, and he, to show its importance, he emphasized on it when he was mentioning it and when he was listing the six pillars of Iman. If we go to this hadith, the long hadith of Jibreel, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when Jibreel asked him, he said, Mal Iman, he said, Al Iman and Tu'mina Billah, wa Malaikatih, wa Kutubih, wa Rusulih, wa Al Akhir. Then he said, Wa an Tu'mina Bil Qadr, Khayrihi wa Sharrih. So he said that Iman is to believe in Allah, the angels, the messengers, the, the books, the messengers, and the last day, and that you believe in the Qadr, Khayrihi wa Sharri, in the decree, the preordainment, the, the predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good of it and the bad of it. So he said, wa an tu'min, he used that word again, and that you believe. So he mentioned the first pillars of five pillars of Iman under one you have to believe in, and he listed them. One, two, three, four, five. And then after that, when it came to the sixth one, Qadr, to emphasize it and to show its seriousness and to show that it is a asl, min usul al-iman, a foundation from the foundations of iman, he said, wa an tu'mina. So he emphasized and he brought wow al atuf lit ta'keed. And he brought this wow to emphasize and to assure that an tu'mina bil qadr khayri wa sharri. And that you believe in the qadr, the good of it, and the predestination, the good of it, and the bad of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. That everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, as he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we created it with a preordainment and decree, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this, uh, this beautiful point and this pillar of Iman in the Quran as well. 
And the Prophet وسلم, gave us this beautiful uh, 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 pillar in a beautiful hadith talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed everything and everything has been recorded. Like in the beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ from the, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ مَقَادِيرَ الْخَلَائِقِ قَبْلَ, أي, uh, قبل أَنْ يَخْلُقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِخَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed and written uh, the decree of all of the creation before the creation of the heavens and the earth, 50,000 years before the creation of the heaven and the earth, 50,000 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write everything in Allah al-Mahfud, that in the preserved tablet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the pen to write everything in the preserved tablet. And that's why also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions that when a person, something happens to him that is in regards to he dislikes it or bad, he emphasized that when a person reacts to this matter or to, the, to this test or to this calamity, we may say, a person should believe that it is from qadar min aqdarillah, that a person has to be knowing that it is a, a decree and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And هذا مقدر والله سبحانه وتعالى قدره للعبد that this is is bound to happen because Allah سبحانه وتعالى has decreed it upon the person as he said in the beautiful hadith وإن أصابك شيء فلا تقل لو أني فعلت كذا وكذا لكان كذا ولكن قل قدر الله وما شاء فعل that if something of a calamity happens to you, then don't say, uh, 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 I wish if I have done this or so and so or that and that, uh, the, the, the situation would have changed meaning. But rather you should say, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَدْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed and decreed, and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, and he wants, it will happen, and it will be done, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as well from what the scholars mention is that in regards to qadr, that a person has to have sabr and patience upon aqdarullahi al-mu'limah. Al, al that whenever a person gets tested or afflicted with a calamity, then he should be patient and he has sabr upon the calamity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sabr, as the scholars say, divides into three aspects. Sabrun ala ta'a. Patience upon, upon obedience, meaning the ibadah that you do, you have to have patience upon it. Like for example now, just a beautiful note because of the timing and the winter and the cold, that alhamdulillah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-ghanimatu al-barida, that shita and winter is the war booty, that something that is gained, Al-barida here meaning as-sahla, sahla tul husul alayha. It is easy to be gained, meaning it is a war booty, and usually in a war booty, the, 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 you have to uh, endure effort, and there is fighting and struggling to get the war booty at the end. But rather, the shita, ghanimatun barida, it is a war booty and a gain that is easy to be gained. Meaning that as the, 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 uh, Al Hassan of Basri and as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the, the, the Sahabi, and Hassan of Basri, uh, uh, the Tabi'i, they mention that it is, it is a, a beautiful gain in a sense that the day is, is, is short, so it's easier for a person to fast. And the night is long, so it's easy for the person to make Qiyamul Layl. And therefore, it is an easy, beautiful opportunity for the person to do this khair and to do this a'malun yasira bi ujurin azimah. They are few little action, actions and deeds, but their reward is great and it's in multitude and multiplied. And this is a beautiful thing we see from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when a person becomes patient upon ta'a, for example, Qiyamul Layl is long, or like what we, when we had in Ramadan, 
the taraweeh and the qiyam and trying to stand all of that time completing those units of prayer and uh, uh, reading the Quran, trying to complete the Quran throughout Ramadan and fasting the long day of fast throughout Ramadan and trying to do all of those good deeds. This is, this is sabr ala ta'a. This is what is patience upon obedience and upon ibadah. وأيضاً, the second type of sabr is sabr ala al ma'siyah, to have patience upon the sins, meaning to stay away from sins and to fight one's soul and to make jihad against one's soul in regards to sins and to stay away from it and to fight your desires and your lust against making sins. And finally, sabrun ala aqdarillahi al-mu'lima, to have patience upon the afflictions and the calamities and the decree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for it. As the Prophet sallallahu mentioned, he said, khayrihi wa sharri, the good of it and the bad of it. And therefore, there are good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for a person. And there are things that a person will uh, 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 not be in a person's acceptance. And they are not in a person's uh, uh, w way of thought. And they are bad for the person as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed these things for the person to test him and to see. And that's why the scholars added the statement. They said, Khairihi wa sharri. After that, they say, Hulwihi wa murri. The sweet of it and the sour of it. Meaning to make us understand it more. To make the understanding come closer to our simple understanding. That sometimes they are sweet. The aqdarullah. And sometimes they are sour and mu'limah. And, and, hard, and hard to take and swallow as they say. And this is like from the understanding of one of our shaykh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Jazairi, uh, may Allah increase him in knowledge. One of our teachers, when he explained this to us whilst we're studying, that it is like, for example, a person has medicine. And this example is a very beautiful example. When a person has medicine, the medicine in itself might be inedible, edible. It might be not nice and it might be not eatable and it does not taste uh, 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 delicious in a sense to be eaten. So therefore, the current situation of the medicine is that it's not eatable and it's not nice and, so, and, and people dislike it. But the long-term effect of the medicine is that there is treatment and there is cure with the permission of Allah in this medicine and there is khair beyond, be, behind this medicine with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same as the Aqdarullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it could be now, it could be not uh, desirable, but later on with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, it could be a, 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 a effective and it could be better for the person. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Do not dislike something and it could be goodness in it in it for you. And also there was uh, mentioned by some of the scholars a story of a person, a real story of a person in Egypt that he used to, he told to one of the mashayikh and he, he used to narrate it all the time to us. And he mentioned that there was a person in Egypt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will that he gets blessed with children yet. So he used to make dua, make dua, and he waited for many years and everything until one day he made dua of anger and he said, oh Allah, I made dua and it's not happening. And, and uh, to extent that he crossed a, a line in regards to not accepting the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his wisdom and plan gave him a child as he wanted and a son. And when the son grew up, the, the, the uh, signs of naughtiness, as we may call it, uh, has started appearing on this child. To extent when the uh, person became a teenager, grown, he uh, started stealing. And he started doing so many bad sins that were apparent and everything. And he became disobedient to the parents. And this is where the person understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planner. And that's why... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will at the beginning to uh, give him a chi child. That's what he understood from it. And that's what the mashayikh mentioned from this story. 
And therefore, as well, we could see it in the story of, of, of Surah Al-Kaf. Like when uh, the person, uh, Al-Khidr, he killed the boy with the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He killed the boy. And the reason he, he killed the boy, as he explained to uh, Musa alayhi salam, is that uh, uh, the reason that this was done is that this, this person, if he would have gr gr grown up, he would become disobedient. He would become disobedient. So, and his parents were righteous, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want to burden them with that. So this is from what we can understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is beyond a person's thinking and beyond the person's mentality, and beyond our scope of mind and our understanding and our intellect. So a person, as a Muslim, all he has to do is to have Iman in the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars mention, and we finalize with this in regards to Maratubul Iman, and the thamarat and the fruits and the benefits that a person can uh, uh, benefit from al iman bil Qadr, uh, uh, is that the, the ulama ja'alu uh, maratiba uh, lil iman bil qadr they have made uh, uh, made levels and merits for al iman bil qadr and the first of the merits of al iman bil qadr is that yajibu an ya'lam al insan anna ilm allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shamil li kulli shay wa muhit bi kulli shay that the person and the human needs to understand that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is superior and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comprehensive for everything. And it surrounds and it encompasses everything. And there is nothing short or defaulted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. And therefore, also from the ranks and the merits of, uh, of Al-Iman bil Qadr is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kataba kullu shay wa qaddara fi lawh al mahfud. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded everything to be written and everything to be uh, uh, written uh, uh, and preserved in the preserved tablet, in the lawh al mahfud. As, as the hadith that we mentioned uh, from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, when he said, that the Prophet وسلم, said, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ مَقَادِيرَ الْخَلَائِقِ uh, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made and uh, written and, and commanded the pen to write everything, and uh, uh, everything in the preserved tablets before the creation of the heavens and the earth 50,000 years. So this as well is a merit to show us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كتابة ما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة في اللوح المحفوظ أن من مراتب الإيمان كتابة ما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة في اللوح المحفوظ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything in the preserved tablet until the day of judgment everything will happen from the creation and the beginning of the creation until the day of judgment and ودليل هاتين النقطتين في, في سورة Al Hajj and the evidence for these two points is in Surah Al Hajj where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after Audu Bilam in Shaitan Rajim, Alam Talam Anna Allah Yalamu Mafis Sama Fis Sama Iwal Ard, Inna Dalika fi kitab, Inna Dalika Al Allah Yasir. That don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in regards to the heavens and the earth. And it is in preserved book. And it is in prescribed in preserved book, meaning in the Lawh al Mahfud. Surely this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, at ease. Therefore, this ayah proves to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything down in the preserved tablet, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He commanded the pen to write. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses and it's comprehensive to everything and it gathers everything and it, there is no deficiency in it. Also from the maratibu al-imanu bil qada, from the ranks and the merits and the levels of uh, uh, believing 
in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ilmu anna mashi'at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nafida fala yakunu shay'an illa bi mashi'atihi subhanahu wa ta'ala to know that everything is with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses and covers everything and there is nothing, nothing that can escape from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything happens with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah at-takwir wama tashauna illa an yasha Allah rabbul alamin illa an yasha Allah rabbul alamin that and whatever you will it is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of all that exists wills subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally in the third uh, fourth point in regards to the merits of al-qada uh, al-imanu uh, bil-qada to believe in the al-imanu uh, bil-qadr to believe in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the decree is that anna Allah khalaqa كل شيء وخلق كل المخلوقات سبحانه وتعالى. That Allah سبحانه وتعالى created everything and Allah سبحانه وتعالى is in control of everything سبحانه وتعالى. As Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in سورة الزمر الله خالق كل شيء كل شيء وهو على كل شيء قدير. That Allah سبحانه وتعالى created everything everything سبحانه وتعالى and he uh, 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 over everything is capable subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore we have to have al-i'tiqad al-jazim anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa kulla shay wa qaddara maqadir al-khala'iq kullaha we have to have in, co in conclusion the iman and the true iman the full iman from the heart and acting upon that iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything without a doubt and he subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a decree for everything uh, uh, before the creation of the heavens and the earth as it came in the hadith 50,000 years. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى قَدَّرَ الْمَقَادِيرِ خَيْرَهَا وَشَرَّهَا حِلْوَهَا وَمُرْهَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed everything, the good of it and the bad of it and the sweet of it and the sour of it as the scholars say. وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الضَّلَالَةَ وَالْهِدَايَةَ وَالشَّقَاوَةَ وَالسَّعَادَةَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created uh, everything in regards to guidance and misguidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created happiness and non-happiness and misery. All of this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. That surely everything is with the will and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, finally, from the fruits and the benefits of al-imanu bil qadr, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his this decree is that يحث الشخص, يحث الشخص that this will encourage the person when he has uh, uh, iman in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages him to do good deeds and it encourages him to stay away from bad deeds and to be attentive towards doing good deeds also encourages the person to have al-i'timad ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal isti'anatu bihi wahdahu subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the person when he when he has al-iman bil qadr that he fully depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he fully has trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything and he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will this and this is what we see in the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu when he was teaching a young companion like, like, like Abdullah ibn Abbas this beautiful aqeedah and this beautiful iman from a young age and he said to him wa'lam anna wa'lam anna ma akhtaaka lam yakun liyasibak and that whatever happens to you is, is it was not not gonna happen to you whatever happens to you is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was not not going to happen to you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it and he said to him wa'lam anna al-ummata law ijtama'u ala an yanfa'uka bi shay'in la yanfa'uka illa bi shay'in qad katabahu Allah 'alayk and that no if the ummah all of them was together to benefit you with something they would not be able to do so until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees it upon you 
And if they were to harm you with something, they will not be able to harm you with something except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it upon you. And the Prophet sallallahu ended the hadith with jaffatil aqlam rufi'atil aqlam wa jaffatil sahaf that the pen has been lifted and the scrolls have dried up and meaning that everything is in, written in the preserved uh, tablets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, to have uh, 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 w when a person has iman with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this will make him happy and contempt with everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills so if he was poor this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for him so it will annihilate and it will remove jealousy because he's happy with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he's not going to be jealous about a person that has more money than him or has more blessings in the dunya than him. And you see that in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, when he was encouraging the Sahaba and the Muslims, that when uh, you, you look at those who are above you in regards to the matters of ibadah, you look at those who are higher than you and above you in regards to the matters of ibadah and worship. But when it comes to the dunya, look at those who are below you. So you say, Alhamdulillah for whatever I have. Alhamdulillah for the blessing that I have. Alhamdulillah for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. And this is the sunnah, the beautiful teaching of the Prophet sallallahu and his guidance in regards to al-imanu bil qadr, to believe in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever he willed. Also, from what we can mention in regards to the different misguidances that happens in regards to the aqidah and the iman of the person is what, for example, people do in regards to uh, uh, different things that will either classify as bid'ah and innovations or they will classify as major sins or uh, ma major acts that could take a person out of the folder of Islam. Like what we mentioned before, kufr and shirk as well, and we've spoken about nifaq as well. Uh, uh, and hypocrisy and as well from these things is sihr, magic and this is a common thing that is found sadly amongst the Muslims and amongst the people and the Prophet Sallallahu shown us the guidance in regards to that and he has warned us and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned it in the Quran and sihr is something that is done using speeches and certain actions and certain things uh, 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 that a person does and he's working with shaitan and working with jinns when he does them and it, it makes a person uh, 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 have fear and it has realistic as well effects on the person as well so it will affect the person's heart and it will affect the person's body and it will uh, make a person ill and as well, it, it, it could kill as well in cases. And it, like as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, it divides between husbands and uh, uh, wives. Uh, and, and as well, it is from the things that nullify a person's religion. We see that in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many scholars mentions it throughout the ages it is from the nullifiers of islam it is from the nullifiers of islam and some scholars like sheikh muhammad ibn Suleiman at tamimi rahimahullah he mentioned them in his book anawaqid al-islam the nullifiers of islam as one of the thing the 10 things that nullify a person's religion believing in sihr and acting upon it and so on and we find that in the uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu warned against it severely and it is from the seven major things as-sab' al-mubiqat seven major sins in Islam when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said ijtanibu as-sab' al-mubiqat stay away from the seven major sins in Islam and one of them was a sihr when he was asked by the Sahaba they, he said ash-shirku billah wa sihr to associate partners with Allah is one of them and to uh, 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 do and to participate in sihr and magic and the ruling of sihr as the, all of the scholars agree 
of Ahlul Sunnah that it is kufr. It takes a person out of the fold of Islam and it's also shirk wanaqidun min awaqid al-Islam that it also it, it, it takes the person out of the fold of Islam and naqidun min awaqid al and it also nullifies and it unravels the person's aqidah as well uh, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Baqarah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walakinna shayateen kafaru yu'allimoon al-nas as-sih that the shaytans they are the ones who disbelieve because they were teaching the people uh, uh, m magic and sihr as well and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned from going to magicians and so on he said whoever goes to a magician and believes in 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 in, in what the magician uh, and and these soothsayers and uh, anybody that participates and does and you go to him and he does this and he does that and he uses smokes and he uses uh, bukhur and incense and he uses certain things and he says tie this and use this and drink this all of this is not from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's nothing to do with tadawi and it's opposite completely opposite to what we call ruqya according to the Prophet Sunnah. The Ruqya is something that is done with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet by the speech of Allah or by the Hadith and the Ad'iya that the Prophet mentioned. So therefore, our two main sources in regards to our Ruqya Shari'ah and the correct Ruqya and the correct treatment and trio kyo in regards to Ruqya, then it's according to the two main sources out of the Quran and the speech of Allah and the Sunnah and the Ad'iya that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the Hadith. Other, other than that, there is the, and, and from what we see from the teachings of the Sahaba, then it's against the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, and from the dangers of this is that طبعاً, it messes up with the people of Aqeedah. When you go to these soothsayers and everything, it, they, they will have control in your life and they will m mess up your life uh, 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 and, and they will cause depression and they will cause illnesses or they will cause happiness. As uh, uh, the different ones as well in regards to magic, either atf or sarf, the magic of atf, which they try to bring and force people to come together, uh, or, or sarf to push away people and to divide and break people. All of this is out of jealousy it happens out of ignorance and jealousy and a person therefore he has to be educated in regards to this matter and stay away from these shirkiyat and stay away from these things that can nullify a person's aqidah and learns the correct religion and that's why it's essential and important we say to learn things like the al-aqidah aqidah ta ahlul sunnah wal jama'ah the correct aqidah of ahlul sunnah wal jama'ah in regards to these matters and in regards to these essential uh, uh, aspects and topics and therefore, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he mentions in regards to uh, uh, the magicians and uh, uh, the soothsayers and everything, whoever goes and believes in whatever they say, then he has disbelieved upon what is revealed upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if a person goes and believes in one, whatever these people are saying and whatever they tell him, and he does, then he has disbelieved upon what has been revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if a person goes to them but he doesn't believe in them, then he, 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 his Salah will not be accepted for 40 days as it came in the Hadith. Now here we have to mention a point as well, like the current version of these things. Uh, uh, some people still do go to magicians, but there is another hidden type of magic and or hidden type of of soothsaying and believing in 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 this type of aspect which is uh, the the horoscopes and going and believing in things that come from horoscopes and everything and now you see them in apps and you see them in newspapers and everything and it says if you're this star then this is what's going to happen to you today and if you're on this star and this is what's happened to you today and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned it in the beautiful hadith in the hadith qudsi narrated in sahih bukhari and muslim where the prophet sallallahu he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala said asbaha min ibadi mu'minan bi wa kafir that some people will come and they will become believers in the morning and some will become disbelievers 
فأما من قال مطرنا بفضل الله ورحمته فذلك مؤمن بكافر بالكواكب If a person wakes up and he sees rain and he says we have been rained with the permission of Allah and with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the mercy of Allah meaning the rain came from that from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he's a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he had disbelieved with the uh, 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 planets and the stars because people in the time of the Prophet sallallahu and everything they used to believe in the uh, effect of these stars and, and, and the different stars and the different planets and so on and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carried on to say وَأَمَّا مَنْ قَالَ مُطُرْنَا بِنَوْءِ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَذَلِكَ كَافِرٌ بِمُؤْمِنٌ بِالْكَوَاكِبِ And whoever says that we have been reigned with the uh, uh, star so-and-so or with the, because of the planet so-and-so, because of this and astronomical signs and so on, then he has disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he believed in the uh, uh, stars and the, the, its signs and the planets. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from these dangerous things. From also the dangerous things and it, the things that will nullify a person's aqeedah and, and matters and it, 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 it starts off as n something normal but it goes and it steers away very, very dangerously and it could make shirk as well. The matter of visiting the graves. The matter of visiting the grave is one of the most essential topics that it has to be mentioned when it comes to the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. Our belief in regards to uh, 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 matters of Ziyaratul Qubur and visiting the graves, then it was clear and it was shown by the Prophet Sallallahu to the last day of his life. To the last day of the Prophet Sallallahu of his life and, and on when he was in his deathbed, Salatullah wa salamu alayhi, may Allah peace and blessing be upon him. It was till then. From the beginning till the end, this aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah, this clear, beautiful Islam, it was shown and clarified by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And therefore, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the beginning, he forbade people from visiting the grave to make it something that is called Saddun Liddari'ah, to make it as a barrier and a stoppage before something serious and worse comes. And we find this in Islam a lot, that there is a, a, a matter that the scholars call Bab Saddu Dara'ah, meaning the matter when you put a prevention, prevention before something worse comes in. And it's like what, for example, in, in, in a simple terminology, it's like when you have a dam, meaning you put a dam and you make a dam and you make a wall, so the water doesn't come flooding and there is a flood happens. So they build a wall and they build what they call a dam. And uh, 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 as well, this could be found in the matters in regards to, for example, zina. In regards to zina as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to prevent going all the way to zina, he mentioned and he says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina." He said, do not even come close to zina. Do not even come close to it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions it, it means that he didn't say, do not do zina. No, he said, don't even come close. Meaning there are paths and there are ways and there are shaitanic traps that could lead all the way to zina. And this is where the scholars, for example, advise when a, uh, that, the, the matter of seclusion, meaning separating between the men and the women. That's an essential. And also the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu said whenever there is two, a male and female, two people in one room by themselves, then the third of them is shaitan. Because, and the, so there is path. And obviously from the fitan that we see today, it could start off with a message, a text message, and he gets her phone number and he gets, Billah, may Allah guide all us and all the Muslimin and protect our shabab and our children from these fitan. And then the next stage, it goes and it goes and it goes, and then only Allah knows best, and everybody knows what happens after that. So therefore, Babun is as a as a point to prevent all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do not even come close to it. Do not even come near it. Do not even go through the paths. And the scholars say, here it means do not even take the path that could lead to that. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, and, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did this in regards to the matter of visiting the grave. He forbade it at the beginning to prevent from going to something which is extreme, which we see, is that people worshipping graves as we see it today. People in, by the name of Islam, they would do this. People by the name of Islam. We see it sadly in many countries. He goes to either the grave of so-and-so, a peer or a maulana or a sheikh or a pious person or a salih or a abid or a worshiper and they start and they make a dua and they come close to Allah using the mentality that all oh, these people were pious and this is the first trap that shaitan did to the people. He came and he came to, to those at that time a thousand years as it came and as we mentioned before that as narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas for 10 centuries, a thousand years people were upon Ummah Wahida, they are upon Tawheed, upon, they were upon the guidance of Adam alayhi salam, they are upon Tawheed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messages and the prophets and sent Nuh after that to teach the people and to guide them as Mubashireen, to, to, to give them glad tidings of Jannah and Mundireen to warn the people from the shirk and the ibadat and so, uh, ibadati ghayrillah and to worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we see it that shaitan started by misguiding people at the beginning by going and speaking about these pious people. These pious people. And he said these people at first stage, they, 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 let's, let's build something of a memorabilia for them. Then after that, when that generation went and people forgot, the next generation, oh, these people are pious so they can remind us for ibadah to come close to Allah. And then the next generation, oh, these, they can help us to go closer to Allah because they were more pious than us. So they give us a boost and they give us this and they can connect us to Until completely he made them associate partners with Allah through these statues and through these idols that they have done at the beginning without knowing. So shaitan slowly, slowly misguides a person through this. And this is how it is sadly in the fact of the umm. And we say subhanallah that if people were misguided and people were uh, not following the guidance of the Prophet وسلم, like we see today and we have in our midst amongst the ummah people are uh, co calling themselves Muslim. But then they do these c c clear apparent matters that the Prophet Sallallahu warns us against from making dua to other than Allah and other matters of shirk, then how this ummah, ummah of Tawheed wants to be successful. How this ummah wants to relieve itself from all of these calamities that it has if we have people still uh, 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 making dua to other than Allah, going to graves and making dua to them, to, make them, to give them to shifa to give them cure, to give them this, or to give them a blessing, or to do something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And that's why we see some of the scholars of the people of knowledge, those who wrote excellent books, they mention in their books that وَمُشْرِكِي زَمَانُنَا أَشَدُّ شِرْكًا مِنْ مُشْرِكِي النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم That the mushriks in our time, they met, so, and one of the authors like Sheikh Muhammad uh, uh, Ibn Sulaiman al-Tamimi, Rahimahullah in his book, Qawaid Arba, The Four Principles of Shirk, and he said the, the, the people that make shirk of our time, and this is 300 years ago, 300 years ago, he said the people that were making shirk at our time are worse than the people at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the mushriks at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Because the scholars say that sadly, Jahl is, uh, Abu Jahl is more clever than them. Because he got one point correct, which is Tawheedu Arububiyya. He had one point correct that he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be, is the Lord of, 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 and the creator of everything. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran upon that tongue, And if you ask the mushriks at that time, who created the heavens and the earth, they will say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Jahl is more clever than these people who are making shirk. This guy is going to a grave and he's saying that he knows that this person in the grave, he cannot benefit himself, let alone benefit you. And you go to him and you say to him, give me this and give me that and give me this. The things that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be singled out with. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be singled out with khalq and ibadah. Uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be singled out with matters of shifa and, and, and uh, dua and the ibadat and so on. 
Otherwise, a person nullifies the pillar of Iman that we mentioned at the beginning, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the three foundations of it. And a person knocks out this foundation and he, then he will enter a field that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of the Muslims and to guide them from it. And that's why we see in the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu through him and through his sahaba and through his sunnah is that he forbade from many things to do with the graves. Praying to a grave. It's not permissible to pray to a grave and to pray anywhere in the direction of a grave. And therefore, as well, the Prophet ﷺ, before he died, he said, do not take my, my, my grave as a masjid, and do not make it as a place of festival, where people, like what the Jewish people and the Christians previously done, meaning with Isa and Musa and so on. May Allah be pleased with them all. So therefore, it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ till the day he died. And it is the aqidah of the Muslims until where the, the, from the beginning of the religion what the Prophet ﷺ is trying to be teaching, the essence of Tawheed. And anything that leads to shirk, the Prophet ﷺ was trying to cut it off. And I, therefore, at the beginning, as we mentioned of the da'wah, the Prophet ﷺ forbade it. Then he said, He said, before I, may, I might have forbade you from visiting the grave, now you can visit it. And the reason for that is that so it will be a mawidah and tadkira. It will be a reminder and, 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 and for the person to remember death. And therefore, as well, from the things that we see that the Prophet ﷺ forbade about is that to put lanterns and put decorations and we see now green flags and green colors and this and decorations and lights uh, as if it's a Christmas tree, probably worse. All of this around the grave, why? You're not going to benefit from it. And he's not going to benefit from it. It's not going to add anything to his reward. And it's not going to decrease anything from him. And it's not going to add anything to you. And he's not going to know about that. So why are you doing all of this and you're getting yourself into a dangerous field and a dangerous trap of shirk? And you make an extremism in regards to something that should not be done. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ forbade about it. You want to benefit a mayyit. You want to benefit a person that is dead. Then listen to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, That the deeds of the son of Adam gets cut off from certain things, from, except from three. Another hadith is seven. Sadaqatun jariya, a continuous charity. Beneficial knowledge that will be left after the person. And a pious child that makes dua for you because of your tarbiyah for them. So we say in conclusion, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that the aqidah of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah is clear walillahi alhamd. And that our aqidah is uh, uh, not extreme in any way. And it's not lenient to extent that it becomes watered in any way. Rather the aqidah of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah is wasat. And it's medium and mediatory and in the middle of everything. And that's what we see in the beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ narrated in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. From the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu where he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna ad-deena yusr, wa la yushadda ad-deena ahadun illa ghalaba. He said that surely the religion is ease. Surely the religion is ease. And it, there is nobody except that he tries to struggle with the religion meaning makes it hard except that the religion will win and he will lose فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا and he said then try and aim and try your best and have good glad tidings وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَ وَشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الدُّلْجَةِ that he said uh, 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 and, and, and take means and be mediatory in the morning and in the day and even in something in the night time, meaning in, in, in that uh, the, 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 the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the hadith shows that our deen and our religion is medium and mediatory in everything. So the Prophet sallallahu chose a path for us. And that's why our religion as well is that we rely upon two foundations. And our manhaj and our aqidah and the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah relies on two main foundations. And these foundations, they are the sources and what we call al-wahyain, the two revelations, 
the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Al Quran wahi min Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wala shakka fi dalik. The Quran is a revelation from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and there is no doubt about that. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. That surely this is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who revealed the Quran. Surely Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who preserved it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in regards to the hadith and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not utter anything by his desire. Rather is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks with is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a revelation in the matters of the deen. And therefore as well, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, أُوتِيتُ الْقُرْآنِ وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ I have been given the Qur'an and something like it with it. Meaning the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَلَا قُرْآنَ بِدُونِ سُنَّةِ وَلَا سُنَّةَ بِدُونِ قُرْآنِ There is no Qur'an without the Sunnah and there is no Sunnah without the Qur'an. Those who try to say that the Qur'an is sufficient alone, we say to them, did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mention how many rak'ats are there in each salah? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention how many the amount of zakah this each person has and the exact amount of zakah? Did, in, 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 did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the different detailed things that only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions and he explains? How could we say that the Quran alone is sufficient? Rather with Quran and the Sunnah the, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ That if you differ upon something, then the aqeed of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah is that we go back to the Qur'an and the sunnah. Whenever we have difference, whenever we have something that we're not sure about and sure of, then we turn back to the Qur'an and the sunnah. We return it back to Allah and we return it back to the Prophet Sallallahu meaning through the Qur'an and through the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And finally we say from the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that we have, we may, we, we, we nasiru ala khuta wa manhaj salaf is salih that we uh, stay and cling and we tread the path of those who are pious, the righteous, pious predecessors previous to us. Al-Khulafa' al-Rashidin, al-A'immat al-Mahdiyin, the righteous Sahaba, righteous Khulafa, and Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, and Ali, and those other Sahaba uh, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. And therefore, when we go uh, 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 through the teaching and through that guidance, then a person will be guided with the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ because they followed the Prophet ﷺ's guidance. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِي الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ عُدُّ عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ He said, cling to my sunnah, stay, adhaya, and, and, and catch, and, and do not release the sunnah of my sunnah, and the sunnah of the Khulafa al rashidin Meaning the four Sahaba, at, at, uh, 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 Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, th that following them is a sunnah as well. And he called it their teachings as well is a sunnah. Connected to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore, if we do not find something, for example, that is detailed in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or explained or any type of tafsir that we cannot find it, for example, in the direct speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we turn to what the Sahaba has explained and what the teachings and the students of the Sahaba, the tabi'een. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ثم الذين ينونهم ثم الذين ينونهم. That the best of generations, my generation, then the ones are after them, then the, the ones after, after them. And finally, from the main foundations of this beautiful aqeedah of ours and the foundations of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that we check and we double check when we try to pass knowledge and when we try to uh, 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 refer to something, we have to go back to reference. And that's why the scholars used to say, Al-Isnadu min ad-deen. Tabi'een. From the Tabi'een, they used to say, Al-Isnadu min ad-deen. And the grateful Imams as well and so on. Al-Isnadu min ad-deen. That having matter of chain of narration and checking and going to the reference is from the religion. وَلَوْلَ الْإِسْنَادُ لَقَالَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مَا يَشَاءُ 
And if it wasn't for Isnad and matter of chain of narration, whoever wants to say something, he would have said it. And he would have made up things. So we go back and we check. And this is what is unique about this ummah of the Prophet wasallam And the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. That we have scholars, the people of Hadith. They are the guardians of earth and guardians of the Hadith as well. In a sense that with their Hadith and with the matter of Sanad, they will preserve the religion and the guidance of the Prophet wasallam. And therefore we say in conclusion, from the final things as well we have to speak about, is that the matter of the Sahaba as well of the Prophet Sallallahu Part of our aqidah and part of our belief in, 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 in aqidah to Ahlul Sunnah or Jama'ah is that we always make dua for the Sahaba and we stay away from whatever happened between them. We stay away from whatever happened between them. And anybody that swears at the Sahaba, then as the scholars mentioned, this could take him out of the fold of religion. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned it as well. Do not swear at my Sahaba. And therefore, it is very essential that we have to be careful when it comes to the matter of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu We make dua for them. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned the Quran in the beautiful surah that we all know, Radiyallahu Anhum wa Radu an. That they were, that Allah, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The four companions and then the Ashra Mubashirin bin Jannah, the ten companions that were granted Jannah, and then the ones who have, were in the bay'ah and in the pledge of the allegiance, and those who went and, uh, 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 and were attending the battle of Badr and the battle of Uhud, all of these and the Sahaba, and a Sahabi is a person that believed in the Prophet Sallallahu and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he believed in the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and died upon that belief and died upon that belief. This is a Sahabi. And therefore, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who always remember the Sahaba in their du'as. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who always honor and, virtue, and have virtuous towards the Sahaba. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is a quick summary points in regards to the aqidah of Ahl sunnah wa jama'ah and in regards to the aspects of Iman, if we have made mistakes, then it's from us and from the shaitan and out of forgetfulness. And if there is anything correct, then it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of Iman and the people of Tawheed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who have Iman until the last time on earth. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who utter Tawheed and the Shahada of La ilaha illallah upon their tongue as the last words in their life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify this ummah upon guidance, upon khair, upon tawheed, upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and to make us of those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu until they die. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa likum wa nisayin muslimin. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all and to reward you all with jannah for those for your coming and for your time and for your learning and for your, bless, for your, for, for, for your patience in listening. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who meet with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to meet with the Sahaba in Jannah al-Firdaus and to have the greatest honor in Jannah as we believe uh, for, uh, the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the greatest honor as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً For those who do good in regards to the believers they will have Al-Husna which is Jannah and Ziyadah which is increase. And the increase according to the scholars of tafsir and Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'ah is having the honor of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful face. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that honor. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.